Hi, this is Bruce Buffer, your voice of the Oxygen, and you're listening to MMA Mental. This post-fight interview is brought to you by MMA Mental, MMA Worldwide, and YourMMA.TV. It is sponsored by Almighty Fightwear. For more post-fight interviews from the biggest promotions, please subscribe to the MMA Mental YouTube channel. Also, like MMAMental.com, MMA Worldwide, Your MMA, and Almighty Fightwear on Facebook. And on Twitter, please follow at MMA Mental, at Your MMA, and at Almighty MMA. I'm now joined by Andy Craven. Andy Craven's coming off a first round stoppage at Bama 15 over Richard Evans, taking his pro record to 4 0 and his Bama record to 2 0. Andy, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Uh, congratulations, it was a, a, a great a great performance at the weekend and always nice to get a stoppage as well. Yeah, of course, yeah. I mean, uh, you don't get paid for overtime, so it's, it's nice to get it done quite quickly. And of course, that I mean, all your fights have been stoppages anyway. You, they've all been submissions. This was the first time it wasn't a heel hook, but it was uh, still nice to get in there and get it done quick. Yeah, I mean, uh, I suppose you can't really expect of how, how fight's going to finish. It just so happens that every time it's been a being a submission and I, I was happy with it whatever the result is as long as it's a win I'm pleased So let's talk a little bit about the build of course this was your second fight for Bama you'd beaten uh, Zai Shah before with a heel hook and then you were up to face Richard Evans uh, what was your yeah. uh, what was your view on Richard Evans as an opponent going into the fight? Well I mean obviously I'd, I'd studied him a little bit there wasn't a great deal to look at him um, on the net so I was going in not not maybe as well as as equipped as I may have been in the past with other opponents, but knowing that he was a southpaw meant that I had to take that into consideration. And I'd seen that he was quite a game striker. Um, I, I wanted to sort of say, uh, use the opportunity to say, look, I'm not just a one trick pony. Um, I can do other things. I can stand up. And I thought by doing that with a southpaw would make even maybe more of a statement rather than doing that with an orthodox fighter. So um, having exchanges with him. Um, was was what I wanted to set out to do in that fight. How did you feel on the feet? I mean, before you dropped him, how did you actually feel the fight was going on the feet? Um, I thought it was going okay. I mean, I was still sort of, it was obviously all over so quickly that I didn't really have a chance to, to feel him out. Um, but I was sort of just feeling it out and, and, and starting to let my job do, do what it needed to do. Obviously, there was a bit of wrestling. Um, once I'd sort of come away from the wrestle, I was happy to just sort of feel him out, and, and I was happy to let him sort of think that he was press, pressing forward. If you watch the fight back, I, w- I was moving backwards, but I was more than happy to do that and just sort of, just sort of suss out what he was doing. And um, I was I was happy with what was happening because my shots were coming off. Now, when when you dropped him with the punch, it, it all kind of happened quite quickly. You dropped him, you pounced on him. Uh, you know, you, you took his back and sunk in the choke. Do you think that he was still recovering from the punch and therefore was unable to defend the choke? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think I actually dropped him t- twice. The first time he sprung back up immediately and then the second time was with the right hand that dropped him. When I got hold of him on top, on top of him, he did feel very limp. And it, it was actually just the way that I, I went to control him. My arm just fell in, in so underneath his neck. Um... And, and I just took what was sort of given to me. Had, had that not have happened, I probably would have looked for a TKO rather than submission. Now that that was your second time, obviously fighting under under Bama. Of course, they're one of the biggest promotions in the UK and in Europe. So, what was it like yeah. being being invi- invited back after your first performance and getting in there and getting your second win on Bama? Yeah, it's great. I mean, I really liked the promotion. The first time I was there, I, was, I really enjoyed my my time with them. Um, really enjoyed working with them as a company. We enjoyed working with the people who who were at Bama. Um, and when, when they invited me to come back, I was really really pleased about it. And it didn't really take much thought for me to say yes again. So then, moving on from this fight, then you've like you you picked up your fourth uh, pro win now. Uh, what happens with you next? How did you feel after the fight? When would you like to get back in and compete again? I felt absolutely fantastic. I, I wanted to get back in that night if I could have done, but unfortunately, it don't work that way. Um, but you know, I think um, we're in talks with Bama at the moment to see what what they've got next. Um, and I, I think hopefully, sort of within within the next two months, I'd, I'd like to be stepping in and, and facing somebody else. With regards to what kind of opponent that is or who they are, I'm, I'm not too sure at this time. So ideally, then, will that be with Bama then within the next two months, or do you think you'll have to go and get a fight elsewhere? No, I think um, I think we could be looking at another show on Bama. Um, I mean, obviously, with the way that my record's going, 
Um, I'm, I'm having, uh, I'm not having a great deal of trouble getting matches on different shows, but we do like Bama and we enjoy working with them, and uh, I think, I think there could be a good future there. Yeah, it's a it's a big platform, isn't it, for for any fighter, especially knowing that your fights are being, you know, potentially going to be streamed live as well, uh, and you get getting seen by a bigger audience. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, the exposure there is great. So, we're, with different aspects of your career and, and getting big big matches and attracting sponsors and things like that, Bama really is a, a fantastic place to, to do all those things. So, with with that in mind, then you, you're obviously you'd like to get back on Bama hopefully with the next couple of months, but you're not sure yet on any possible opponents. You just want to see what's on offer. Yeah, definitely. I think it, it's still quite early, really. Obviously, they've got their job to do with finding the right opponents and, and decide what they want me to do. Um, I was obviously watching the the Bama fight on the Sky Sports Network and thought, well, that was a pretty interesting fight. I think they actually I mean, you're two and zero in Bama now. So, how many wins do you feel you need to get before you get offered a title shot? I suppose it's completely down down to those guys. Um, I mean, the, the featherweight division in Bama at the moment isn't exactly packed, so um, I don't think it would take too long for them to present that opportunity to them. But I'm I'm not going to push it as long as I'm competing and I'm winning. I'm, I'm happy. I'm only 22 years old. I've only had four pro fights, so. I'm happy to just keep on gaining experience and if they decide that they want to put me in for a title fight at some point then, and it's right, then I'll do it. Yeah, you've come a long way in a short space of time really because you were fighting on CSFC before and now you've, you're have you fighting with Bama. So you have, you've done a lot in a short time, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, I suppose um, it, it just comes down to, comes down to the, the effort that's been put in. Um, my coach, Neil, always tries to time frame things intelligently and, and don't want to rock anything but some people have said that things have maybe been a bit slow others say that things have moved quite quickly um, in terms of uh, the amount of fights that I've had in the time I've had I think four over the space of a year is about right but I think with obviously getting onto Bama so quickly maybe it does seem like quite a, a lot's happened in a short space of time but I'm, I'm happy with it it all feels like it's, it's happening organically and I'm pleased with the progression that's come out well, you've obviously proved you should be there because you've, you're still an undefeated fighter. So, obviously, congratulations on a, a very impressive performance at the weekend. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and before we let you go, I just want to give you a chance to do any shout-outs. So, if you'd like listeners to, uh, to know, let them know about your Facebook and your Twitter, there's any sponsors, yep. friends, family, trainers you want to shout-out as well? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so, um, on Facebook, I don't have an athlete page set up yet, but I'm in the process of one getting, uh, getting one set up. But if you want to add me, it's Andy Craven. Um, Twitter is Andy Craven MMA. My Instagram, uh, Andy Craven MMA. Um, check out all those things. Cool stuff there. Um, my sponsors, uh, Muscle Factory, Ian Thomas Joinery, uh, Spice Life, Red Duck Clothing. All doing a great job of supporting my career so far. And obviously it goes without saying, my family, my friends, my team. Check out Fight Ministry Humberstone as well. It's all uh, it's my gym that are producing some great fighters at the moment. So keep an eye on that page. Well, thank you very much for your time, Andy. I look forward to seeing you step into the cage again. Yeah, 